that you serve the uh, allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so uh, I will start off by looking for a couple of minutes. I'll move there. I'll second. Any changes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? HS1 is a resolution awarding professional services contract RFP 21-YB-001 for uh, Camp Hollis. Um, look for a motion to accept the bid to do discuss. Make a motion. Second. Uh, so this is for uh, the uh, drainage issues at the cliff there? Yeah, the ball erosion. And you've got the low bidder that you selected. <clears throat> uh, yes, and I believe Barton and Lazunas has done a lot of work with the county before. Their experience through reading through their uh, their resume, they have been involved in quite a few ready projects. Um, and is, is you're aware of that, I guess from what you learn through that, is the county's experienced different things dealing with these ready projects, I figured. Um, you know, we have an experienced engineering firm that is uh, used to working with Ready and is familiar with expectations. And they're essentially going to act as the general contractor for this, that's my understanding. They're going to put together all the uh, construction work and they're going to do work with us on um, the state requirements through Ready and, and do the seeker and everything along the way. So they're going to be the construction manager as well? I believe so, yeah. So you look like you have a question right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Um, anyway, just one. You look at the just tremendous variation here. If you look at Hunt Engineers, 185,000. Three times as much. Any any idea there? Did they just not want it? Or did they did you really look at that? Did they offer it or show for you anybody around or uh, and you know, I believe I scored them the high, well, I, did, I take that back, I did not score them the highest because when I looked at their budget, I gave them zero. Um, but aside from that, they were so detailed and they have just, I mean, their, their presentation was fantastic, I mean, but I don't know what they're doing for that much more money. And so you're totally satisfied these others then? My scoring was pretty close. I mean, if when you look at through, um, well, Martin Lejeunus clearly was scored the highest on both mine and Zach's um, scoring. But if you look at number two and three, they're pretty close together. Um, that just struck me. It's just pretty remarkable. If you're entirely satisfied with it, I am. You know, we're not going to get something. Oh, we this, this, or that. That's not possible. Not a bit, Jeff. You'll have big variation. Yeah. Big this three times, though. That's oh, crazy. I've, I've seen Jeff. I like reading that. All right. Sometimes you're just fishing. Brian, I entirely trust you. Well, I mean, as I was reading through it too, and I don't think you guys have the piece, but when I'm looking at the reference piece, I circled right there. Um, it looks like they're also the engineering firm for the highway for, for working on one of their projects. Yeah. So I'm thinking again, their experience working with the county and with us working with them and the knowledge they brought forward and all the projects they've been doing, including some here in the city of Oswego. Um, they really seem to be out of their game. Her? I know they do all the the water layout for the town of Richmond. They did all the, for the years that they went in Richmond. But they're approved, they're approved the contract for city of county owners. They're approved oh, all kinds of work all over the county for years. And when you look yeah. at it, when you look at a lot of them, you know, they all it's kind of like when you have people fly for grants, they, they clearly have people who are writing that know the key things they're putting in there and you know, they hit all the... They're good. They're good. Well, they hit all the qualification boxes and they were the low bidder, so... Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Any, any other questions? No. Yeah, look for a vote. I need that. Uh, mm -hmm. Just look at, we got we have a motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, let's go to uh, HS2, similar. Uh, award having to do with uh, 
shoreline stabilization at the Independence Trail. Uh, I'll look for a motion on that. I'll second it. Now on this one there, the third highest, but it's also the same vendor. So it was uh, some of the logic there that they are good at the ready projects. They weren't wait, they weren't very far off, and they'll be able to. Attempt. Is this something they're going to be able to use the same vendors on and end up? I it's going to be part of the reason we're going to save some money. Or, I think so because again, a lot they have a lot of whether they're in house, their their firm being in house with some of the different aspects of the project that are needed, or they're working with they have some contracts with. Um, different um, entities that they could use the yachts. I mean, I think that's it was part of why because they're using the same the same team pretty much to do all. Questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, HS3 is a resolution establishing capital project number 0721, Camp Palace Renovations. Uh, this is in the amount of $12,788. I'll look for a motion. I'll move it. Second. Uh, oh. Any comments, uh, Fry? No, as I mentioned, I think if you guys got all the information, it's, it's all work that needs to be done. It's not really a big wish list of... Um, you know, it's obviously updating different pieces, but it's all identified um, updates that could be done to not only make our property, um, you know, more appealing for rentals and such, but also safer and, um, you know, more as we move forward in the future, looking at things we could improve upon, for example, the, the electric work for the new appliances, what that would do would be able to um, be able to provide the service for a hot box and such that can not only create more meals that you can cook, but also keep them warm. And things that we can't currently do, so we'll make the job of what needs to be done easier. Any questions for Brian? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We just for the resolution authorizing a budget modification to accept American Rescue Plan Act funding for the Office of the Aging. This is um, separate from the money that uh, we get for the entire county. Um, and this is in the amount of $398,731. I'll look for a motion to... Second motion. I'll oh, second it. Sarah, you want to give us a little brief on that? Certainly. So this money was awarded to us from the state office for the aging. They got their own pile of money from the ARPA funding, and then they distribute it to all the offices for the aging across the state. We can utilize this funding from now till the end of 2024, so there's a number of years that it can be accessed. So what we're looking to use this money, um, a big portion of it is to get a senior center, hopefully um, at the Bunner Street location, but also to help cover the cost of the additional meals that we're providing right now to um, meal participants so we don't have to discontinue that when the regular um, CARES Act funding ends as well as building into the budget um, a line for animatronic pets over the next three years. It also will help support, um, we received some additional funding this year for unmet needs for transportation to social adult day, so this money will go to help support that in the coming years so we can continue to offer that transportation. Um, so as well as um, supporting health promotion, uh, caregiver service programming, and um, hopefully to get money to, or have money to go towards a temporary congregational site in the Swiggo um, before the senior center is open. I did see that one of the pages of my budget mod because it was a, a tab on my budget line, was not included in. So I didn't make copies for everyone, but this is my four-year plan of how the money is going to be spent. I don't know if anybody did. Did everybody receive that? And I just don't have no, it. I didn't, right? have, I didn't have it either. But if you pass it down through, we'll make sure it's in the minutes. And okay. Chanel can make a copy for everybody. Okay. I'll send it on. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Sometimes I, I didn't say that there was another page. It was tabbed there, but they do get overlooked. I do understand that. And it's a workbook, and I wish I had caught it before. It's on my way over here today, so sorry about that. So you, you're uh, looking for money to create the congregate site in Oswego at Bonner Street, but um, Chairman, can I put you on the spot for a second and say what is, how are we going to, do we have a plan for how we're going to figure out how to use that Bonner Street property, or is that all having to do with the architectural thing that we're doing? Maybe it's a There's question. There's a lot to me about that architectural component of that to make sure it all fits, which Bill can jump in. And actually, I actually talked with uh, Legislator Drum, uh, we're going to talk a little bit after this to see how this could work out temporarily, whether it's that site or another site. But I think to your point, uh, Roy, if you're saying is Bunner Street ready for this tomorrow? No. No, no I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, you know, uh, we, can, we can authorize the money, but we don't know if we're going to be able to put it there. Mm -hmm. How long is it going to be until we until we know? When's that architectural right. it's not, study? It's not obligated to that project right. either. Right. This That's is just for, how this is your proposal yeah. for how to use this yes. this money, this big chunk of money. Right. If it okay. ends up that we cannot have that space or won't be able to be utilized, then we can shift that funding to other worthwhile. I mean, maybe it'll be a permanent, just a congregate site somewhere else, and put the money towards the operation of that. Have you broken out a portion of this for doing something in lieu of Bunner Street? Yes, that's where I have $35,000 to get a temporary site started in 2022. The rest of it, $50,000, is for the senior center. So if we don't have a senior center, then we would take additional funds, some of that $50,000, to continue on with a site in Oswego and then do an examination of the other sites to see which ones are underperforming to see if we want to combine some sites because I think Oswego with the highest population of seniors in the county is going to be a high performing site. I think there's going to be a lot of participation and maybe we'll take a look at another site and then offer transportation. How long has transportation. the site been out of, have not, not been in Oswego? I mean, no. Since 2015. Yeah. There's not been a site since 2015. Okay. Long time. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, just a, I, because it's an important point, and thanks for bringing it up, Roy. I think, <clears throat> and I mean, Sarah, we're all aware of this, but um, there's there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen when it comes over to Bunner Street, right? As far as space and what we what we can devote to it, we've talked to public defender, we've talked, we've got to get the board of elections over there. Mm -hmm. I think we're all privy to that. We talked about that in government actually this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I won't be around for it, but I do think it's important that. Um, OFA continues to, to, to have a stake in that building just for, for logistics alone. And Sarah's talked and has a plan about um, some existing space that are already sorry, there that be retrofitted with a kitchenette and so on and so forth. So I do hope that they're they're involved in the conversation <clears throat> as it progresses over there just because um, it's important to have, we're, we're in talks with the chairman and, and others about putting up something temporarily for the city of Sligo because it's been a huge need since since it ceased to exist in 2015 but um, I do hope that they're included in the conversation once I'm gone and, and, and moving forward about having something more more permanent there um, to be able to, to to house that because it is it is important but Sarah's done a lot of good work and and kind of mapping that out of what it looks like and what we can get maybe something temporarily so we'll see where that kind of all falls but um, I do hope they're included kind of in the conversation in the future once we have the specs on that that whole facility um, because it's important, I think. Yeah. Well, I think I think we just uh, <coughs> on that contract, uh, the architectural engineering firm yeah. who did the analysis of the building process and management station. We talked about this one in government, but yeah. Tom said uh, regards to the board of elections and and uh, public defender. So that's that's in the process. So it's it's, it's going to take a while for that to even come about. So. Go ahead. We we're all on the same spending cycle, though. I mean, you, your your ADRC money is the same right. time frame we have up for ours, so we can wait. I mean, if it's going to be three years from now before we know, we can wait that time. Um, we could just set up another temporary site. I think it's really important to have it right next to our offices because a senior center isn't just people don't come and go on their own. You have to have somebody to oversee that and oversight of it. And since with us being right there, 
that is the best location for us to have. I don't have staff that can go to another site um, unless we're in, and when this money is gone, it's gone to, to have another county employee to be managing a senior center somewhere else. I just I just think this is the most op optimum space for us to utilize. Maybe we don't get as much as I would like, <laughs> but um, certainly I hope that it could be in the in the future for us to have that space. Chairman, sure. mm -hmm. oh, I was just going to offer. I know Legislator Drum and I have had a number of conversations back and forth. Whatever he's got a passion and he's driving that. I know uh, he had talked with about Sarah. Would you be available after this committee? for conversation, and then I guess I'm a little remiss, um, would, would you be available as sure. chairman? Um, I don't know if we're talking 15 minutes, yeah, type of stuff, whatever, but yeah, just so that we don't hijack the whole conversation. But well, I mean, we yeah, well, it's just, it's important. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen how well the site <coughs> on the North Shore has worked. Now that's moved to Central Square, yeah. I'm a little less familiar with how it's been running since. Through, you know, I know it was diff really difficult through COVID, but it seems to me that it's a uh, kind of a vital thing to have back in Sweden. Go. Agreed. Any other thoughts? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. So on to um, HS five, uh, resolution authorizing budget, budget modification to accept health insurance. Uh, information counseling assistance stipend program grant for the office of the aging. Um, we all, uh, that's an amount of forty-five hundred dollars. Look for a motion to discuss. Make a motion. Second. Go ahead, sir. Um, okay, sure. So the state office for the aging reached out to me and said, you know, we understand how hard it is to get good quality volunteers for insurance counseling because there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of um, knowing all the different plans and information that you're providing to people. And they also know, they look at the volume of people we assist every year as well. And they said, we would like you to be one of the pilot counties that receives this stipend to be able to offer to your volunteers up to $75 a month. They have to commit to 20 hours of volunteerism for the program, but they could get a stipend of up to $75 per month um, for that service. So we said, you know, if we can get some quality volunteers that are willing to help, I think it would be great. There's no um, cost, it's all grant funded, and if they don't perform their 20 hours per month, then they don't get the, the full stipend, um, but it's based upon the number of people that we can get in and a monthly amount for them. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, resolution. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's a HS6, Resolution Awarding Professional Services Contract, <coughs> RFP 21-OFA-004, door-to-door senior transportation. Um, this is uh, an award to OCO, who is the only respondent. I'll look for a motion. Motion to discuss. Second. Uh, my understanding is that this is uh, $70 for round trips and 35 for a single trip, but there's, after several weeks, this is going to be reviewed to see if that's adequate. Right. Um, is there a uh, an amount not to exceed on this? Because mm -hmm. there's no numbers on this, mm -hmm. so it's a little unusual. Oh, gosh, yes, there is. And I believe I have budgeted $30,000 for the year for that. not knowing for sure how many people would be participating and I think that's more than enough. I don't think we'll spend that much. But that this is from unmet needs money that we had received earlier in the year, the additional one hundred forty thousand um, dollars. that the budget mod was this last month, I think it was the previous month um, for the transportation for social to social adult day. Uh, any questions, Sarah, on this? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
motion passes. Thank you. Uh, HS7 is a resolution authorizing the creation of a new checking account and a DSS budget for mandatory witness fees and mileage. Um, we'll for a motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Uh, go ahead, Stacey, why don't you tell us a little about this? So, <clears throat> for the last several years since we brought our legal services in house to DSS, we um, have struggled. Uh, with process server vendors. You may recall we've been through three. Um, one actually ended up uh, with fry charges. <laughs> um, this fourth vendor has worked out wonderfully, Associated Legal. Uh, they have a very deep network of process servers. And um, we are, uh, they have actually been giving a witness check the fee and the mileage when they uh, serve the subpoena and then they charge us two bucks. What's happened with COVID is now we're getting more and more entities like school districts who are willing to accept a subpoena instead of with personal service by fax and by email. And so now they have balked a bit at sending out all those checks by snail mail. And I want to say this is a difficult uh, kind of checking account, if you will, uh, to manage because a lot of people don't cash them. Um, or they get lost. Or they cash them late. So reconciling this. Would it be good if they didn't cash them? It is good. It is good, but when you got to reconcile an account, you know you're looking for them. Yeah, and we're we're estimating maybe a hundred checks a month. And the tre I want to be very clear. I've discussed this several times with our treasurer. Uh, Kevin Gardner is uh, indeed uh, supportive of this. Um, we will issue those checks uh, ourselves now. Because uh, Associated Legal decided two bucks wasn't enough when they're not actually serving the subpoena, and they were going to charge us for it. So um, we can't take on that kind of hit. Uh, so I, I think this will work out good, um, and I believe uh, we'll act. At first, I was worried about do we have enough uh, workers to actually process all this, um, but I got to say with Munis. ESS, Employee Self-Service, and everybody putting their timesheets in because you know, we typically have uh, close to 300. Um, and in summer youth employment comes on, there's that many more paychecks. Uh, this has really freed up some staff time. Um, so I am thrilled because there was a lot of things kind of falling off the table. Uh, and this was one uh, piece I wasn't quite sure how we would handle. So you, you can see from the, um, uh, the resolution that's actually in the packet that yes. we're talking about a total budget line of, of up to $40,000. So. Correct. And that's budget neutral. And there's a new um, resolution. Um, yeah, everybody has a copy. Yeah, you did. Yeah, right. We're going to amend. Yes. I'm going to offer an amendment to take out paragraph number five. The result that talks about the account A60705, etc. And then paragraph number seven, which is the resolve that forty thousand the budget line A6015, etc. So I would uh, offer the uh, one more edit. There is one more edit. Yes. Uh, the third paragraph down, it should say DSS fiscal unit beginning January first, twenty twenty two. It says twenty twenty one. And yeah, the copy of it. So. Oh, okay. okay uh, so I'll add that to my mention, uh, my amendment. You have to do an amendment. I mean, it's it's already it's, it's in committee. Right? Well, yes, yeah. yeah, it's amending mm -hmm. the one that's in your packet. Okay. To the one to the we're just one that was reduced in the packet. Right? You're just replacing what's in the packet. 
you can do it as a replacement or as an amendment. Okay. Well, we still have to correct the 2021, so yeah. what's the difference? Yeah. I have an amendment to change uh, in paragraph 3, 2021 to 22, 22, and to remove paragraphs 5 and paragraph 7 in the original. Yes, sir. Just, just to explain to the committee why those are being removed, uh, as written, the resolution would have changed the 22 budget which cannot be changed legally now until after 7 o'clock on December 9th after your public hearing. So moving this $40,000 from one line to the other will be one of your housekeeping motions that way. I'll second the amendment on the, on the, on the floor. Okay, all those in favor of the amendment? No, I, I do have one more part. So why does the $40,000 <coughs> go into this? Because of the explanation you just gave. Right, it's not going in now because it's okay. Uh, it has yeah. to, we have to wait until the public hearing to change the time to budget. Very good. So we already had a second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So we're really just creating a checking right. account. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're authorizing the checking account. All right. So all those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Any discussion on the amended resolution? All those in favor of the amended resolution? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, which passes. Thank you. Well, I hope that helps you out. Uh, HSA is a resolution authorizing the budget modification of the social services to transfer funds. Uh, this is having to do with uh, nine hundred fifty thousand dollars to foster care um, from Safety Net and nine thousand nine hundred. Uh, to additional hours from adult family services for the time payment. Um, no, it's to the overtime, correct? Yeah. Correct. All right. Look for a motion. What? Second. Uh, so, you want, why don't you tell us a little bit about this? I mean, I know you and I talked about it. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the bulk of the increase uh, for foster care expenses, um, at least this increase, is due to the state, New York State uh, Office of Children and Family Services, increasing the rates we have to pay for foster care, adoption subsidy, <clears throat> um, residential group diagnostics, uh, Committee on Special Education Placements, and uh, YL, JD, Juvenile Good, and let's see, uh, RT, uh, RTA placements. So all of the placement costs are going up for us. Um, I did uh, advise you a few months ago, uh, we were seeing an increase in the number of kids, uh, although the, the total number of kids in foster care has gotten pretty stable about 195 to 200 kids every month. The number of kids placed in residential treatment centers has increased. Um, this is that shift going from uh, what typically some of these kids would have gone into state residential treatment facilities that are specific to developmentally disabled or specific to mentally ill kids these are being shut down by the state and these uh, shifts are coming over to us. Uh, so uh, we're continuing to see increases. We have budgeted a little more next year um, and uh, the 950000 that's coming out of safety net, so that's childless couples, uh, individuals, and families who have exceeded 60 months on TANF all are in that safety net. And we've seen that actually lower this past year because of the UIB and all of those uh, extra waivers and all of that piece. Uh, now we pay 71% uh, of uh, the cost for safety net. This 950 that goes into foster care uh, will be 100% local share. So 
So at 950, we're looking at about $675,000 actually being in that safety net line and local share. Are you following this? Okay, <laughs> it does get a little confusing. Um, but we'll be watching this very carefully. The bad news is that was only the first rate increase. We just got word from an ADM last week that they're increasing the rates again. So it won't be till January that we really know um, how this all shakes down and what kind of stability we see in numbers uh, for the cost of foster care. And when the state changes the rates, sometimes they make them retroactive. They have they made both of them retroactive. So right. now it's additional monies that we didn't know we were going to have to spend that comes all at once. That is absolutely true. It went back to April 1st for the first rate increase. This rate increase goes back to July 1st. Yes. Yeah. So, Go ahead. Stacey, um, any idea what relative percentage that increase is? The relative percentage of the rate increases? Yeah. I do not. Um, I ha I did bring the administrative director here in case you had some, you know, maybe it even says it here, Brad. Let's, let me slow down. <coughs> and, and I guess I'm just curious because inflation and everything else, are they doing more to workers? And we understand, you know, the therapeutic and the residential is going to be <laughs> extremely expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really have a good handle on percentages uh, based on this. I'd have to do some calculating. Mm -hmm. um, and how things like even you know minimum wage increases, et cetera, are going to affect because that's going to affect cost at each so It does. It does. And in know. fact, the Fed's increase, as you knew from uh, my report out, I think last month, they've also increased the federal salary. Um, in order to be salaried, you have to meet a certain threshold um, versus hourly wage, and that that will, that's going up as of January first. So for those folks who, particularly therapists and um, clinicians, professional folks, um, that means a jump up too. And just a second, kind of a follow on to this is that the full information of implementation of Family First. Do you expect any impact on that? I, I guess, I kind of think that's just that. Well, that is my prayer. I, let's say that. You know, I am still optimistic that we may see uh, some decreases in foster care. We're working very hard with our family court judges, with our, with Barnum, um, because that's the bulk of families where kids are going into care is with substance use disorders. Mm -hmm. um, well, so I would just think that, that, again, these kids going into the therapeutic or residential, probably families aren't going to take them either, not to be crass or something. No, but they, are, they exceed what we should expect foster parents in a community uh, should have to, uh, or should be safely able mm -hmm. uh, to house and care for. Um, and now, you know, I, I had told you folks before about how the hospitals are really pushing at us, and I've taken a few voluntary placements. Um, I wouldn't take a, a voluntary placement on this uh, one youth who's been up there uh, 30, 30, so 41 days now at Upstate. I would not take a voluntary, and there was good reason for the parents not to go and pick that. Uh, that boy up. Um, and now we've got a local uh, regional hospital um, who has filed a petition in family court themselves. Uh, this is unprecedented, um, so I don't know how this is going to actually uh, kind of roll out here. Uh, this is all new territory for us. Um, but it is, I think the, my message to you is Local districts are expected to pick up on any kid in trouble under that child welfare umbrella. And the state is pushing at us uh, to be that entity. And uh, that's all, remember we get 50% federal 40 money, but then everything else is capped. Once we spend those caps down, the foster care block grant, the triple FS set aside for 
child welfare, which is also PAP. Once that's all, it's all on us. It's all local share. Um, our association, uh, uh, Public Welfare Association for the state, um, all of us as commissioners have written OCFS, uh, have <coughs> spoken about this issue loudly. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is uh, not a good thing at all. Um, Questions? Uh, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, so I'll get to updates, Office of the Agent. Okay. First, I want to say I looked had my computer with me here today, so I was able to look regarding transportation, and I have ears marked sixty thousand dollars for the transportation for that contract. Thirty thousand was increased for the actual social adult day because we already covered that cost through ISIP and unmet need. So we we added an additional thirty thousand dollars to offer social adult day to participants. And then the transportation was maximum $60,000 out of that additional unmet needs money we received. So I wanted to make sure you knew that it was double what I said. Okay. Okay. So Office for the Aging, we've been working on HEAP to um, continue to process the HEAP applications. We've received in the door 362 applications. Um, right now we have 22 pending, so 340 of them have been processed and sent along to social services. Also, we're still in the midst of open enrollment for Medicare Part D and C. Um, we have um, 751 contacts from October 1st through today um, when I just ran the report for people who've sought service and received um, services from our office. We have until December 7th, so we'll be continuing on assisting people right up until that deadline. Anybody who we can um, delay until after December 7th, we're, we're doing so. Um, people who have EPIC, which is a state pharmaceutical assistance program, or if they have a low income subsidy, we can, they can um, make a change after the December 7th deadline, so we try to prioritize them later in the month if someone else doesn't have that, so we can address their concerns first. Our Santa for Senior program, we almost doubled our participants this year. Last year we had 37 participants. We have 70 participants, and we actually had to cut it off. We were receiving additional phone calls, but um, with the staff time and assistance and to get the gifts in and get them out, 70 was the cap for this year. Um, we're always hoping to get more, so if we have 70 this year, we'll work out whatever it takes to increase that number for next year, but if they're all over the county, it's not just in the heavy populated areas, they're in all reaches of the county, so 70 seniors will be getting um, a basket of goodies from other community members that have purchased them, whether it's an agency or people are just looking to adopt a senior for this program. There's a tremendous amount of support for it, so we're very happy to be able to do that. As part of that, too, we're getting 25 meal bags from Catholic Charities, so we'll be able to assist 25 people, 25 seniors, with a meal for the Christmas holidays. And I believe we're getting four from Arise as well be able to get out to the community. So that's almost 30, 30 meals we'll be getting out. And we had, for our Santa for Seniors, we had um, the women in nuclear, they adopted, they are buying um, coffee mugs, cocoa, and I think it's maybe socks or mittens for all of our participants as well. So for the whole 70, they're going to be uh, purchasing those to go and um, in with our Santa for Senior bags for all of our seniors. We're also writing Christmas cards for homebound seniors that are in the senior buildings or in um, at the nursing homes during this time to let them know we're thinking about them. Um, some of our staff will also be 
Christmas caroling at Bishop Commons on the 13th. So if anybody wants to join in and jump on our bandwagon to come Christmas carol with us, you're more than welcome. And just let me know and I'll let you know the, yeah, the time and the location uh, where we're, we're, we're going to set up. So the more the merrier. Um, and I don't know if you're aware of there's the styrofoam ban that's going into effect. Um, a lot of other county offices for the aging utilize the styrofoam in their home delivered meal containers. OCO does not, so it's not really affecting us. So I just want to let you know that's not there's there'll be no additional cost for any changes that have to be made in production. So we're all good there. That's really all that I have for updates. So if anybody has any questions for me? I have a comment for you. Um, please tell Emily she did it. Excellent job today. We had a couple walk in our office that had evidently approached your office, could not get an appointment to have it done by the 7th. So I called over and she made the rounds over there, got me the name of the person with Fidelis, come to find out his Obamacare is through Fidelis, and the lady said, oh, this is an easy one, we can take care of you, we'll get it all done. And they called me before I came over here and said they've already got an appointment scheduled. So, Great. I don't, she did an excellent job. She said, I don't know, but I will find out what I can for you. And put me on hold and came back and uh, took care of me. So. Great. That's always good to hear that feedback. Thank you. Great. You can have five Christmas baskets. We have one five. agency that got okay. one back. <laughs> Great. Okay. <coughs> Stacy. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I did put a, uh, a little reports, just data, facts, uh, a handout on the new water assistance uh, program, and I'll get right started. Um, so personnel updates uh, at this point, uh, about you know, it's, it's still been a challenge for us uh, recruiting um, without a civil service list and helping folks to feel comfortable coming to work with us provisionally um, until they can pass and be reachable on a civil service test. So that slows us down, but we've got uh, about 12% or 37 vacancies uh, still as of this day. Of those six, uh, six are caseworkers. Uh, we've had 14 caseworkers newly hired, of which two have already left the SS. Um, and there are seven caseworkers enrolled in mandated state training, seven caseworkers pending training. Uh, there's no once a new uh, group of folks uh, start with the state when the state offers that. Uh, so since May, since uh, the uh, hiring freeze lifted, DSS has hired 25 caseworkers, which is about a third of our caseworkers, 28 percent. But then we typically have three to five percent that's either out of medical leave or um, uh, reduced work, uh, low uh, different issues that come up, FMLA. Um, since you know, I've been reporting out on the caseworkers and the social welfare examiners, because those are our frontline staff that really give the constituents what they need. Um, the rest of us support that work, but those are, are really our two major frontline folks. So since May, we've hired five social welfare examiners, of which four are still employed with us. And we still have three vacancies and are challenged uh, in recruiting those. We've hired 11 community services workers. Uh, the CSWs, a, both our first and second floor uh, social welfare examiners and case workers, and we still have eight CSW vacancies. Um, I am so happy uh, to report that we have uh, seated an interim director of financial management, Lori Wonkowski. Uh, and we recently offered, and just before I left, heard she accepted uh, as a senior accountant position uh, to begin December 13th. Uh, Bill Martin, who's been with the agency over 30 years, is retiring in March. 
Um, that is all our WIOA, that's all that uh, millions of dollars of federal money that come through. That's a hard, uh, those are hard accounts and grants to manage. So uh, it's, uh, I so appreciate uh, you providing me that uh, overlap between uh, Bill's retirement and our um, and our new worker coming in. Uh, we also, I think, have a lead on a second. Uh, we'll be doing a second interview on a senior accountant um, because, as I reported last month, our we only have two senior accountants and. Uh, Bill's retiring, and then uh, the other Gail has taken a job with Public Health. So, um, and she's a 30-year employee of ours. So we really lost a lot, losing a lot of institutional knowledge in our uh, fiscal management. Um, and uh, I did want to just mention how. Um, we, we really are getting hit with COVID positives, <laughs> with quarantines, uh, with school-aged kids being uh, uh, out uh, because of exposure um, or the school, school shutting down for a day or two. And um, we are, I just want to be transparent that we are uh, having some of our high-performing workers uh, working from home. These are short-term, short-term situations, and we are uh, constantly tracking output. We do that anyways, but we're especially diligent um, uh, with folks, uh, especially knowing uh, legislators' feelings and uh, directives to me about that. I, I got to tell you though, guys, we just don't have any choice. I mean, I got to push this work out. There's heating emergencies coming up now, you know, the food stamp uh, uh, deadlines, uh, you know, SNAP openings, um, homeless housing issues where it's just a lot of mouse clicks. Mouse click after mouse click after mouse click. So I just want to be upfront about that. Um, and Marty does a great deal of managing uh, that flow um, and that report out as far as uh, the impact of the pandemic on us. Um, I am giving you this record if you want to pay attention to this one. Um, so you can kind of see where we're at. This is, these are canned reports that come out. Uh, and you'll see percentage of workers were more than uh, 15 CPS investigations. Um, and it, you can look way down at the bottom, number 50 in rank, 50 out of 64, 40% uh, um, of our workforce has uh, CPS, more than 15 CPS investigations. Um, you can see the next one uh, is our percentage of overdue investigations. And we look down uh, at number 53. 53 out of 64. Again, 40% um, of investigations are in an overdue status. And then our percentage of timely safety assessments, uh, 54 out of 64 down there, 61% um, of the time, or um, four, about 40% again uh, are not timely in safety assessments. Um, so we've lost a lot of ground. I think you know, just before the pandemic hit, we were really doing good. We were kind of stabilizing our workforce, our caseworkers, uh, and we were uh, up uh, in the middle range, and we were uh, always uh, over 60% um, with uh, timeliness and uh, and we are certainly losing ground. So you can see the impact uh, in real numbers and where we're at with the rest of the state. I typically only share these charts with you once or twice a year. Um, sometimes I show you year to year to year what it's done. Um, but I did want you to see this in terms of where we're at uh, with the rest of the state. 
Stacy, and then we're doing investigations. Is there any jeopardy of um, losing revenue or paying penalties or fines or anything? Not at this point, Brad. Um, you know, there's always that threat of sanctions, mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, the state has really kind of backed off, uh, although uh, I, I will be reporting out on our newest audit, <laughs> but uh, there's always that possibility. But at this point in time, I don't predict the state's going to pull that trigger. Is They'd be very though? foolish. It's possible down the road. Right. Yeah. If I see that right. as a probable, mm -hmm. elect, I certainly would let the committee know. And what would another uh, avenue to correct that be? I mean, could the state come in and provide some kind of help? Because if we're 40%, that's pretty significant. I know. Um, no, they probably wouldn't send help in. Um, they would work with uh, the local district and they would certainly um, connect with our, our chairman. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would love for them to send help in instead of just sending me more directives, yeah. more audits, more ADMs, more bureaucracy. And we have screamed really loud, cut it out. This is not the time to throw all this stuff at us. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. not not being abided by. <coughs> um, there is a need for foster parents. <coughs> Excuse me. So I did put um, a little blurb in there. If uh, you want to take that and cut and paste it onto your uh, own uh, families, friends, uh, people you know, your church. Um, this Saturday uh, is a uh, informational session, a virtual one. Um, I wanted to mention again on page two here the new CPS standard. I mentioned it to you, but now you've got a little written narrative. And I do this because you need, this is like a really big deal, guys. This is we have been able to do some credible evidence to substantiate or indicate a state central registry report, a report of abuse or neglect. As of January 1st, after much to do um, over the last few years, it's now a fair preponderance of the evidence. Real legalese terms, but the impact on us will be significant. Um, there's a chance uh, that uh, we may not get some of the reports we've historically gotten. There's a, it won't even be accepted. There's a chance when we get them, although we feel like we should indicate it, we can't because it's not a fair preponderance of the evidence. It's, if you think of you know, Lady Justice with the scales, it used to be just a little bit and okay, credible evidence. Um, now it's tipping up even more. Now we've got to have even more. So um, I, I also feel ultimately this will impact family court proceedings as well. Um, it's going to make it more difficult. We're going to have to document um, and document again. <laughs> the actual written words on a paper is what's uh, if you don't write it down, it didn't happen. And that's another piece where we're really falling behind on. Uh, we're back to being uh, up to nine, ten months uh, backlog in people doing their notes. We've got them sequestered again. We, we, we just can't not do it because some of the cases are blowing up again and, uh, and going to court and we've got to have some documentation in the record as to what we've done in the past. So we're doing the best we can. Um, Stace, I got a question on that. Yes, I indeed, like yeah. Roy. Um, mm -hmm. When you say, <clears throat> when we're saying we're backlog on notes again, this is, is this caseworkers you're speaking about out Correct. in the field? So talk to me a little bit about, I mean, we've, we've, we tried to, because <clears throat> if I remember correctly, one of, one of the, one of the barriers for falling behind on notes was caseworkers had to return to the office to come and, and fill out all their notes. The committee moved and the legislature moved to give you guys the technology out in the field to be able to do that um, remotely, essentially. So 
has that not had the effect that that we that we anticipated, or what? what no, it did. Okay. You know, we were really in pretty good shape uh, before we lost. Now we're down a third. That is the issue. Ken. The issue is. Uh, think about <coughs> any business you run and think about a third of those people being gone. Yeah. Now, yes, they're there, they're being trained, they're going through the state mandated training, but, but you can't just send them out on these mm -hmm. really crazy cases alone yet. Mm -hmm. So now they're shadowing someone. Mm -hmm. Now that person has to train the person, the new person, as well as their notes. It's, it's a heavy lift for the folks left behind. We've had four resignations in the past two weeks. Three of, out of those four caseworker resignations, and those aren't reflected in these notes. So that's <laughs> what I just, what's in your notes right now, uh, add four more to it. But three out of those four went to work for Oswego Health uh, as care managers. So, there's also a different time um, and what they can do in the field. There's a lot more people that are bringing things from the office out into the field for um, people to sign or, you know, to fill out with families there. But Connections, which is the state system, is our system of record. It's right. our required system right. of record. So if they put all their case notes into Traverse, which we, we want them to do, yeah. they still have to then copy and paste into connections mm -hmm. because even though we can pull data out of connections to help us manage cases, mm -hmm. it won't allow us to push it back over into connections. Okay, the state yeah. won't allow that two-way communication between gotcha. them. Gotcha. I think you lost me for a second. So we use we use our Traverse system, right? That doesn't automatically sync with the Connect system, right? It has to be copied and pasted into the connect system Actions. and then you lost me on the last part there we, we um it, when you pull it's it because the state system of record yep okay <coughs> they will allow us to pull data out of connections yep so that it comes into traverse and we can use it but to manage our cases versa. but they won't allow us gotcha. to push information in gotcha which is asset exactly <laughs> okay. exactly especially since connections is very clunky and it's not user friendly mm -hmm. and now you can't even search. No spell check. No, I mean it's. They put it in Word anyways. You know that's what I would do if I, I was a caseworker. I'd write it all in Word, cut and paste. Now with Traverse, you write it in Traverse and then you cut and paste. So it's still some mouse clicks there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the state system is clunky. Not so the problem is sustaining workforce, not the technology. That's true. Although I gotta say, I think the technology has kept our head above water. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Um, all right, we'll go on to child and family services audit. So there's a new audit format. You know, while all these state workers have been home working, they uh, come up with a new audit uh, format. Um, that's being implemented across New York State. Uh, before they come in and audit, OMAs and SPAs, Child Protective Investigations and Foster Care, and that was it. So now it's more holistic. It takes into account adoptions and preventive and all of our programs. And it comes up with these <coughs> themes so that it's about the skills that you have to then help your workforce to develop and on and on it goes. Uh, it's much more in depth. How do they select the 50 cases? Uh, they are selecting them, first of all, within a time frame. Uh, basically, it's 2021. Um, and uh, they look for cases um, that have kinship care in it, that have uh, safety plans in it, that have plans of safe care in it. These are all kinds of things that you have to fill out and be connected to in that uh, case record. So they're looking for specific uh, pieces to that. Yeah, it's, uh, it feels a little overwhelming. Um, but uh, we will do the best uh, we can. 
Um, Laserfish and Traverse are launched um, uh, because of uh, this uh, wonderful colleague of mine to my left. Um, thank you, Deputy Commissioner Marty Babcock. Um, again, we are uh, looking to archive things electronically. We don't have another place to put another box of papers, and neither does our clerk over in the new archive building. We haven't been able to get even a square foot of that space. So, yeah, we just had to do something. We couldn't start um, storing them in the elevator <laughs> or in the hallway. So, we are um, we are on our way uh, with Laserfish. Um, did I get all those right, uh, Marty? Uh, there's a couple that are not in here. Uh, child support is not fully implemented yet. They're going to go in December. But we did child care as well as adoption and foster care. Yeah, as well. Well, the sealed adoption records will be part of the laser piece process. So are you back scanning? Okay. We are too. Yeah. Have to. Yeah, what we pay Iron Mountain was ridiculous. So we, yeah, we've had four employees doing it for a year, and there's probably two years left to, wow. to back scan. I love to have people like the just devote to it. But if you have a free moment, that's what you do. In terms of our typists, our clerks, they've all been trained on it. Our recept, our her, the gal who answers our phone. She's not answering the phone. She has a scanner right next to her. Okay. Uh, Jeremy oversees all of that. Well, we we found retirees at 20 hours a week. And yeah. Yeah. We try to implement. If you touch it, you scan it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're not quite to that point yet because <laughs> <laughs> we have to have enough room we can touch the other stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's great. In in the long run, that's going to be huge. It is. But you got to get to that point. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race, I right. keep telling our folks. Right. <laughs> um, and Traverse, is there anything you want to say about Traverse? Marty put together their uh, design that uh, Northwoods has for having coaches, right? Right. That we have um, a team of about 22-ish coaches that individually reach out to other staff to make sure that they are on board with using the system, that they understand what to do with it. We share best practices. I'm meeting with them once a week right now until the end of the year. Sharing best practices, asking questions. We have our customer success rep from uh, Northwoods join us on those in those conferences and just continuing to iron, iron out anything that anybody needs help with. So staff are really not having a big issue with it. It's much more user friendly than the other than pilot was. So that's your record keeping system. What were you using prior to that? Yeah, it was that co-pilot with Northwest. Co yeah. Now it's traverse. Right. And I say do I say that traverse? Right, traverse. Okay. And that feeds into the state system well? It doesn't yeah. feed it into the state system. Doesn't it's feed into it just it connections uh, it can go the other way, but not into the state system. Okay. The state doesn't want anything touching them. You know how that goes, including costs and expenses of our department. Well, that, <laughs> that's why we went with Thera because it feeds into the state. Yeah, and we're our, we have a much more limited uh, options. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Then. Yeah, yeah. Good job. I also wanted to pass out the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program. So this is the same as HEAT, Home Energy Assistance Program, except it's uh, for overdue water and wastewater bills. Um, spread the news. It is a link on OTDA. It's set up like ERAP, the eviction, no, Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Um, ERAP. And so it's set up like that with a portal that goes into the state and then the state sends a check directly to uh, water authorities. Uh, so if there's, and I know uh, that's an issue in the city. Yeah. Uh, so however you want to get this word out, that'd be great. You got it. Um, <coughs> um, 
And then I did give you the end report for ERAP as I advised last month it ended, uh, it was ending at that point, and has now ended November 14th. And so here's, uh, here's where it's at. Uh, they told us initially that this couple of million dollars they spent on this portal and program uh, could tell us how much money they were distributing in Oswego County and how many people actually got paid already. Uh, we have not been receiving that. So this is, uh, this is the best data I can give you is what the state gives me. What are, what are the headings for the last three columns? Oh, sorry so, about that. Rental arrears is the first. Rental assistance moving forward three months after the applications are approved. And then utility arrears is the last column. Yeah, that would have been better to have headings up there. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. I have a snap question. Okay. So pop quiz. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> a little confused. The Fulton School District yeah. said, gosh and gee, we're gonna give these kids money. And because our grandchildren stay with us, um, we ended up with two a card for each one with $820 on each card. And we called them and said, that's wrong, it's not correct, we're not in that income. And they're like, has nothing to do with income. I asked it, did all the schools do that or was it selective? It was schools, uh, so there's two ways for preschool breakfast and lunch to be done. One is student by student gets eligible. Okay. The other is if a great percentage of that school is all eligible, then the whole school is eligible. Okay. And so this additional monies are for all that, all those free lunches and free breakfasts that, that didn't, didn't happen because school was closed. Now, this remember this is a national program. So, all, you know, here in Oswego County, like Fulton, they were either delivering or had places parents could walk to and pick up lunches. Right. Uh, here in Oswego, uh, people were out delivering those lunches. Uh, that's not the case all over America. So this is how, I guess, USDA, uh, there was a special name for it. Um, school-based mm -hmm. EBT yeah. or whatever it was, okay. but um, but basically you're in a school district in Fulton where it's predominantly kids in that school are eligible for free. So everybody in that school district got those exorbitant SNAP benefits. It, basically, mm -hmm. it's a stimulus check. Okay. Think of it that way. But the other calls I got were from people that are on SNAP. And they, their fear is if they use that, that will affect the SNAP that they get that they're on on a, a regular basis. But it does not. It's okay. a one-time. It's a one-shot. That's it. Is that the only school district in the county that got it? Or do you know? It can't be. No. I'm, I'm sure it's not, but I couldn't list to you the ones. Okay. I think APW has all yeah. the whole school is free or reduced breakfast and lunch. Okay, but it doesn't affect the other because I've gotten two or three calls. You know, I don't want to use this because, you know, I don't want no, to... No, if they got the EBT, it's in addition to their regular EBT card. This is a one-time card they're getting. You actually got an EBT card, right? Right. Yeah. Right. We haven't used either one because we don't need it. We haven't figured out. Maybe we'll just do a food bank thing or something with it. But, well, you know. That yeah. is very generous of you. And... I hope other people think that way because uh, food pantries, now that all this stimulus and all this stuff, I say it's gonna, at some point it's got to cease, right? Will yeah. this go on forever, guys? Depending on what Omicron or whatever. The new variant. 
Yeah. Oh my God! I'm yeah. just exhausted by it all. Yeah, more money. Yeah, like ten hundred dollars. Is it seventy to sixteen hundred now? Our governor has declared a state of emergency. I know the state of emergency. I know. I saw that and thought, okay, all these waivers I thought would kind of go away and people could get started on things. It's all about control. All right. My appreciate that. Let's rein it in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're back. Sorry. Back to business. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, have you, is that the uh, completion of your report? Yes, it is. Yes, unless anybody else has Jimmy, got anything else? Oh, I could. You want to stir the pot? That'd be an email. No, 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 I'm fine. Oh, please don't. <laughs> yeah. You get one of them now and then for me. I know. It's terrifying. Well, uh, speaking of an email, can you email me um, your, All your, these reports today? Sure. Absolutely. Um, and then that will help to uh, be able to try to promote the yeah the in low inc low income household water assistance program. Yeah, yeah. I can mail it to all of you. I just uh, my apologies. I didn't get this timely into. Um, can I ask you a question about? So I mean, it comes up a lot. We've had some discussions about the of of how we're you know, continuing to fight fraud yes. in the division. And as yeah. um, is there is there a what you, and noticing any trends? Is there an uptick? Or is there a down? Is it? Are we pretty much holding our own as far as being able to make sure that uh, only people that you know need and qualify for services are getting services? Uh, I just mentioned waivers, so there's a lot of waivers out there right now. Meaning, um, I don't have to show I'm actually eligible for Medicaid because I just keep getting Medicaid until the waiver works. So are there some folks getting Medicaid right now that may have gone back to work or may have done something where we should be figuring out their eligibility? Um, but it's not thought if all the waivers are lifted, right? All the, the rights are lifted. Um, so our fraud investigations is down. Um, what we might have gone out and investigated is no longer an issue. Like um, a person who says they're looking for work and they're not bringing us their law, they're not showing us an evidence, and um, that, that's waived. Now, we are continuing to engage those folks. Face-to-face um, -face interviews are that waiver has been extended. Um, help me with this, Marty. What, what are other ADNs, INFs have we received? Um, um, <clears throat> I've lost track, frankly. Yeah, because some of them have gone away and others continue. Business is not as usual, though. So, no, people are not being held accountable okay. in our social services system in the uh, way we have historically uh, been able to send uh, a social services investigator out uh, to ensure uh, that what they say is true. So, uh, I, I guess to kind of focus in a little bit more on it, what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at is has the um, the 30, the, you know, down 12%, 37 vacancies, that hasn't necessarily hurt as much as waivers and it, uh, all these constant rule changes. And it is, it's hurt our Child Protected Child Welfare Services more than it has social welfare examiners. So right now, you heard community services workers, we've got a lot of vacancies there. So what we've done is we're having social welfare examiners uh, compile a lot of those documents that formerly a lower level position has been uh, putting together. You know, I thought we were going to get a wave this fall because of the UIB uh, stimulus being uh, off, um, but I, I, they have not been coming in to apply. So my hope is they're out there uh, getting jobs. Um, I can tell you our employment and training is getting a little bit busier. Um, That's good. It is good. Um, 
uh, especially the mandated folks who are on social services. Um, so, uh, well, I know there's a, uh, uh, an interesting program that the uh, mobility manager is running now that uh, it's going to allow for, uh, I think, eight uh, CDL uh, drivers to, to get trained and get paid while they're being trained, and they're going to walk directly into jobs mm -hmm. at the end of that. Um, that's a fabulous program. And then that's going to be recurring as many times as we can do that. That's yes. a good program. That's a wonderful program. Yeah. Um, and they worked with our employment and training. Uh, that was a, a collaborative project. Uh, yeah, there's some good, good news, hopeful uh, yeah. situations going on out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm meeting with Sheena Wednesday to oh, kind of talk about where, what's the state of affairs on things. And, uh, right. Rachel may be there. I don't know. Yeah, um, Brad did ask me uh, to get a fraud um, report pulled together. Uh, it just keeps getting back burner. Um, yeah. It's things have. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Heavy on the shoulders yeah. lately. This okay, has been, this has been a tough year. Go ahead, Herb. When you're doing your fraud investigations, mm -hmm. are you using the sheriff's department as well? Uh, we would not typically have the sheriff's department involved. Our our investigators. I'll tell you where we get a lot of it is mouse clicks. We can get into employment records and is somebody in prison and still, you know, they're, somehow their check is uh, still getting deposited. We can cut it off just like that. We get reports out of the state like that. So much more is automated. That old, you know, I mean, I grew up in the era where fraud investigators went to the bar. Um, kind of like yeah. child support, yeah. uh, looking for absent dads. You know, we knocked on the door and they... But nowadays, it is a lot of mouse clicks. Um, uh, we can cut things off very quickly. Um, and, you know, fraud is, uh, is still incredibly important. I, you know, I feel like if somebody's stealing government money, it's like taking money out of the tithing plate in church. That's my view of it. So uh, we take it very seriously. I can only go by the laws, the statutes, the regs. Um, I can say we probably miss a little bit, and we don't work through the sheriffs, uh, but with our DA, uh, when his attorneys, when he doesn't, uh, when he has vacancies and he doesn't have enough ADAs, typically that impacts us in getting. Um, a case moved along uh, to a trial. Yeah. Funny you say that. My granddad owned six bars, and he said every time the suits walked in, there went an unpaid tab the other way. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We did just that. replace yeah. two out of the four investigator positions. Yes. Well, the mouse clicks work good, but I think the handcuffs clicks works better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other questions for Stacey? If I can have two minutes after the meeting. Sure, absolutely, John. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, Brian. All right, I'm going to be quick. Um, all right, so aside from the what you voted on earlier with the uh, capital project, just to give you guys just a quick briefly, um, 2021 dollars, so we're doing it 2022 to our infrastructure to you know, keep things moving along and going with that. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the importance of what you guys already approved. And then with that, I also wanted to just thank you again that the we have on a schedule with B&G this Papamola building at um, Camp Survey will be winterized. Um, buildings and grounds will be, you know, working on that. That's all set to go. Um, along with that new concrete, we have new fencing. If you're, for those of you familiar with Palace, there'll be new fencing going along that patio. Um, that will be used to um, is a sitting area, so it'll be nice for rentals, but it'll also be a safety piece too. Where kids and stuff won't be running through the hilly area where there's different um, construction infrastructure, different pieces that go there. Um, so that'll be done, and also we'll be doing replacing two roofs. Some roofs um, we'll be putting metal roof on the maintenance building, which if, again, if you pull into Camp House, it's one of the first things you see, and it has moss all over it. Um, much overdue needing to be done. And then cabins three and four will be getting new roofs as well. And um, so that will all be taken care of. And then as we talked about before that you guys approved the um, 
climbing tower has already been built and the new playground will be built in the spring. Uh, it is yet still to be delivered. I don't want to say it's out on a boat somewhere, but it's uh, this was to be delivered last month and um, the company that made it said it was it's out in the hands of the shipping company. So uh, we've already communicated with uh, Cinnamon who had a lot of money invested in that and they understand the situation. Um, and they put, pushed back our final report from December to June to get it built and put in. Uh, for those of you who are involved, we talked about with um, OBCR, the um, uh, Leadership of Soto County class, well, the Soto County Leadership Youth class is run through my office, and at the December meeting, they will be doing their Breakfast of Champions, which is also the poverty simulation. Um, it's quite interesting to see how young people react to, um, for example, um, I'd love to like have somebody like you, Stacey, come and run the DSS portion of the program and literally just do your job as they come in and they don't understand why you just can't give them something. And, and it's really quite interesting to where we have to arrest a few of the kids on that night that day because they get a little really angry. Um, because, but it really, when they're done, they walk out of there with a whole new aspect of what the world was like and what they did not understand. And why is it that, not seeing this on DSS, but on the other end, why is it that you can't just give me this, you know, why, you know, I was told somebody else got it, you know, why can't I just get it, you know. So it's, it's interesting how the back goes doing that, how permits are issued to if they have to fix something in the whole process. So that will be in December. Um, a whole bunch of different holiday things coming up. Um, we have a free family movie, I'm probably going to pronounce this one, but I believe it's called Encanto. Um, it's going to be at the Oslingo Theater at 9.30 the, on uh, December 5th. That will be on our social media page if anybody wants to go and pre-register for it. Um, with COVID, you have there only allowing so many people in there. Um, we are working with um, Assemblyman Barkley on the Stockings for Veterans program right now. So we have our young people collecting as they did last year for um, that project. On the 18th of December, we have a family holiday party in Pulaski. I made a whole bunch of flyers and had them made for you, but I've already given them to Legislator Yurden. So if anybody wants to look beyond that, um, that will be a free holiday party that we will be doing up in Plasky. Um We obviously can't use Camp Serbia at this time of the year, so um, Legislator Yurden was really grateful for helping us secure that location to be able to handle a party up there Where uh, at the um, American yeah, Legion. Yeah, yeah. And there will be free pizza if you want to come. There might be a big heavy guy with a white beard there too, if you have asked for. Uh, yeah, will there be a job? A problem. <laughs> Um, we're also having free family skating at the Bailu on the 11th of December from 11 to 1. And all these things are on our social media page or will be, and they'll be on our web page as well on our calendar. Um, this past weekend, we did the tree lighting in the city of Oswego. Um, about 400 kids were able to see Santa. Um, I don't have a number for the amount of people who um, went to the event, and I'll just leave it at that because, you know, with our hands getting slapped with COVID, I don't know what number was there. I'm going to say 10. Um, <laughs> we're back in the schools um, and things are going well as we talked a little bit about our PROMS program at the middle school. We are putting together a youth summit um, for the spring, um, going around the challenges that we face with COVID this year. I think I told you about it, but it will be at the Sligo County Fairgrounds, so we can have it outdoors. We can make it much more interactive. So as we are, like I said before, if we want to talk to our young people about different industry and businesses and jobs that are available in the Sligo County, well, if we're going to bring, for example, Roselli there, it's much more impressive for Roselli to have a truck there than just have a gentleman or a female talk about what a truck driving position or whatever it might be. Um, our AmeriCorps program picked off its 24th year, and it is going strong already. Um, things are moving quickly with that. And also, oh, with that, um, as Stacy was talking about, the money being out there through different areas and Jim brought up, um, they're also providing money to the AmeriCorps program where it will increase the funding that comes along with it for that. And an agency has to pay their local share. Um, we can freeze up that part where they don't have to charge more, but we can give more money to the actual members to enlighten them to actually sign up to do the work, um, which we know can be so valuable. So that's another piece that's coming. I'll probably be bringing that to you um, first meeting of the new year to um, whether we want to accept that money or not to move forward with it, um, going with that. So that's my quick summary of uh, what's happening. Um, things are very busy with different programming, and um, we're just looking to wrap up our year with 
uh, a lot of holiday things and touching um, in the areas where needed um, to move forward. So about it. So I got a positive bill. That's the shortest report you've given in your career. <laughs> well, you know, I see people looking at watches and signs, and Mr. Drum over there is giving people a look. You know. Very good. All right. I will look for the appropriate motion. Uh, I'd like to make a comment real, real quick. I'd like to thank Tom and Brad. This is their Yay! last meeting. Good afternoon. For the service that they've done. Thank you, thank you, Tom and Brad. Unfortunately, you're stuck with the rest of us. <laughs> 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 uh, Jim needed to be here, here to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't repeat things too often, so <laughs> we're just filling in. Appointments next year. Yeah, we'd like to keep on looking. You need to tell Jim that. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I, I echo that sentiment. I'm sorry I didn't think of it. Um, so. It's been a pleasure to have you as chair, Tom. It's been a pleasure working with you. Likewise. Likewise, too. Likewise. Wish both of you guys uh, the best, and however you get, stay involved. Yeah, sure. There's openings at the SF you want to go to work for. Oh, yeah, now you can be foster family. <laughs> 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 We, we make a motion. We got a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? All those in favor. Aye. Aye.